Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the test flight preview in the Meek 21 fish bed. I forgot where I was for a second there. Okay, last video, I was having a little bit of trouble getting my UV-16's rocket pods to fire. There might have been something just not right about that configuration, just having the S-24's and the rocket pods on there at the same time. Or I might, and it's more likely, I just didn't have something set up correctly. But I reloaded the mission and made a little bit of a change to the loadout. So if I go external, you can see that I now have four rocket pods on the wing stations, and I also put an ECM pod on the center line station just to see how this would uh, how this would look. And I get an additional panel up here for the ECM pod, and I have it on. I've got the ready light active, and I have a whole lot of other controls I can uh, can use up here. Yeah, and I'll get to that uh, a little bit later, but yeah, I just wanted to see what that looked like. Okay, so now let me go ahead and put some rockets on some targets out here on the range. So. Me set up with the ground. I'll leave this in IR. That one doesn't matter. But I won't put my selector over to the four position. Actually, I'll go to the eight position this time. It's going to fire eight rockets out of um, yeah, eight rockets out of each pod. So I'll have two runs with it set up this way. And it's going to fire a lot of rockets on this run. Okay, now I've got my selector to the down launcher position. I've got this one up to S, I've got this one up to Auto, and I'm going to go to... I honestly cannot remember now if this goes to Gyro or it stays up. I believe it just stays up in the uh, top position. It doesn't go down to Gyro until I want to use the, the gun. So right now, I am in a good configuration to go ahead and make this run on some turrets. So, now I just need to get it myself into a good position to make the run on the turrets. So let me extend out a little bit, and I'll come back once I'm set up. Okay, so now I'm coming around in a better position to get into a good setup here. And one more thing, I'll go to the narrow beam on the radar, so I'll get good ranging information out of the radar as I come around and point it towards the ground. So I'll just roll in on this target. It's going to be about a 10, 15, no, about 10 degree dive angle. Just going to push up the throttle build up some more airspeed and I just want to roll in on the target place the reticle just short let the reticle walk up and at about two kilometer slant range fire the burst of rockets it just takes one depression of the weapons release switch to fire the burst okay so on this next pass I'll do it I'll do like a little pop-up attack where I I'm set up all ready to ready to fire I just want to see how this works on a long run in like this Okay, so I'm just waiting for the range to decrease. Okay, now let me just kind of slowly creep it up towards the target. Right about... That doesn't seem right, does it? I think I did miss something in the setup. Maybe this does need to be down to the gyro position for it to give the actual location on the ground that it's going to impact. I'll go with that theory on this next run-in. But I'm not that worried about it. It's, um, I'll figure all this stuff out later. Okay, so this time around, I'm going to uh, set up and let me try just a little bit of a tactical, uh, tactical employment here. I'm going to stay at low level, high speed, and I'm going to do a pop-up attack where I uh, climb. Once I'm at a, a suitable distance away, I climb, roll in on the target, and then fire off the rockets and then get out of the area in quick rapid succession so okay I'll keep it coming on around I don't gonna get too low being not very familiar with how this aircraft handles okay I'm pulling about four three and a half four G's I want to be careful not to exceed five G's okay coming around let me go ahead and see what I've got here okay I'll go some for these target for some of these targets off my left so okay popping up Okay, this should work out nicely. Okay, rolling in. Throttle back. And just roll out. Place my reticule. Boy, I gotta go way nose down on trim. Okay, I'll take this one. Okay, I was a little bit further away than I thought, apparently. Okay, and... Fire. I don't know. It's, um... It might just be my technique. It, it seemed a lot more accurate during, during the training module, 
and it's very possible that I did just miss something obvious on the setup, and it's set up just a little bit differently than what I had before, but, I mean, that's the basic, that's the basic setup, and that's how you do a basic rocket attack in the MiG-21. Okay, so now, let me set up for a guns run, so I'm going to go to guns on my selector. Okay, this can stay in S, this can stay in auto, I will leave this one in gyro, and let me arm the gun. Okay, there we go, and I should be all set to strafe some targets. So let me come around here and get set up on a strafe pit. I'll be right back once I'm set up. Okay, and coming around, getting set up on the strafe pit that I have set up, uh, four strafe pits out here in the distance that I'm going to roll in on. Let me just set up long ways out and just see how this goes. Now for this one, I do believe that I need to, and this might have been the case for the rocket delivery too, I might have just fired a little bit before the radar had a chance to start giving me good ranging information from the ground and therefore give me a good, uh, accurate location in the gun sight on where the rounds are going to fall. So let me just come in from this dive angle. I'll stabilize out here on this target. It's kind of handy having that little standby ridicule right there. I'll eventually do some uh, techniques where I just use the standby ridicule and not use the paper at all. Okay, I think it's starting to kick in. I think the radar is starting to get updates now. Okay, yeah, that's definitely the case. Boy, this is going to take some figuring out when it comes to the... It's, uh, boy, I just don't like that technique because the... It just takes so long to get that ranging information and the ridicule just starts to jump around and really starts to update a little bit too late, honestly, on, um... Uh, during the run, I wanted to be firing a little bit earlier than I was there. So let me just set up in a racetrack pattern. I'll be right back once I'm set up again on another run. I'll tread this from a slightly higher dive angle. Okay, so coming in now for one more pass, slightly higher dive angle. And this will be the last pass that I make. I'm uh, just getting a feel for it at this point. Then I'll head back to base, put her down, and come back up and do some bombing. But, okay, let me roll out and get stabilized and see if I can, yeah, see if I can just uh, get stabilized, anticipate where the reticle is going to settle down at once it starts to get ranging information. I'll pull the throttle in just slightly. I would guess right there at about the slant range that I'm going to be firing, that's about where I would guess that it will be settling down to. I want to be firing about now. Uh, it's it's going to take some practice and it's going to take some getting used to, especially on the pullout. It's I've just got to find the technique for the MiG-21. And granted, it's not really set up for designed for a ground attack, strafing attack like this. And you know what I what I think here with the Delta Wing with a light aircraft that's not very maneuverable down low is that I want to come up with a technique that will work for a longer range shot just so that I'm not so low, just so that I have time to pull out of the dive and to abort the attack. Just try this one more time from a higher dive angle on these pits. Okay, throttle in. I'll leave the throttle plugged in a little bit higher this time. Okay, there's ranging, and... I don't know, it's, it, it very well could be my setup here. And boy, that was uh, that was all I could do to pull it out of that dive. Uh, boy, I am not looking forward to dive bombing in this thing. It's going to be it's going to be hairy. <laughs> but I mean, that's um, but I know that going in, so I can anticipate. And I know that yeah, I just know that I need to not press attacks in this aircraft. I need to get in, make my release, and get out. Let me turn that down try to turn that down. What's going on here? Yeah, there's been a little bit of a bug with the latest um, latest version so that it dials go past their stop. Let me just turn the RWR off. Yeah, so some of the dials are acting a, are actually a lot uh, a lot wonky in the latest uh, version that we have here. Okay, so and that's not a MiG-21 thing, that's a uh, just in general in DCS right now. 
Okay, so landing gear handle is in the brake on position. Okay, or nose gear handle is in the brake on position. I'm gonna go ahead and kill my arm and switches. And that's uh, something is confusing me now because did I not just have? I know I had it in the last video that device up here that was mounted on the gun sight. Maybe that's like simulating me physically mounting something. I thought. God, I could have swore it was just there. And that that must have been last mission. So, okay, so I've got some kind of device that mounts up here on my gun sight, either associated with the S24 missile or I don't know. I'll figure that out later. But um, yeah, where am I? Snocky Kolki should be just off the nose to the left. Or have I already passed it? I've already passed it, haven't I? Yep, uh, there it is. Okay, so then bring it on around 700 kph. I'll just pull the throttle back and go for 500 on the approach. And I'm going to go for a steeper, faster approach. I don't care this time if I land a little bit long. I just need to make sure that I have the aircraft under control and that it's the sink rate is under control and that it's me controlling the sink rate and not the aircraft controlling me on the way down. Okay, so 550. Yeah, uh, I do need to put the nose up. So let me just plug in some burner and just go up. <laughs> For something that uh, normally accelerates and climbs so well, once you get down low in low airspace, that nose just wants to drop. Okay, so airspeed 500. Let me go gear down, flaps intermediate. Okay, this will work out a lot better on the approach. Steeper, faster. <laughs> better. <laughs> okay, 400 and we go full flaps. And I'll just maintain 400 on the approach. And I don't care if I land long, that chute really does decelerate you quite rapidly. And I can always plug in the brakes if I get down to the end of the runway and I need to. Okay, so 360, I need to go throttle up just a touch. This is, um, this might be the way to fly, just a little bit steeper than I normally would in another aircraft. Just thought I'd keep the runway inside. Okay, 400, it's still looking good. Okay, so I'll, I'll do like a little sh a space shuttle technique. Go steep, do a little bit of a pre-flare, and then go for the runway. Okay, 360, push it up just a touch. Okay, now in that little pre-flare. Okay, I need more airspeed. Okay, three, and that's good. Right there. Okay, throttle in. Much better. Okay, throttle idle. Shoot. Awesome. Okay, that's... That's the way I'm going to shoot for the approaches. And I can still take it in shallow. I don't need to dive exactly like I did that time and do that little little pre flare, but um, let me get on the brakes slightly. And let me go ahead and jet the chute and take her on back into parking. Okay, yeah, but that uh, that was a lot better. And I think the key there was that I just had more airspeed and that I was able to control the sink rate as I, was, as I was coming in. So that felt and worked a lot better than last time. Okay, so let me come around here, pick up my marshaller, and very gingerly take it on in. Yeah, because normally, you know, you'd be, uh, a lot of times uh, what'll happen is you would have a set of chalks out there. It's uh, be kind of like, okay, put the gear between here and uh, you, it's it's actually quite remarkable. I mean, it's it's almost like a challenge to the pilot that okay, you have to be precise when you bring it into chalks because uh, there there's like uh, tools, personnel, equipment around your parking location in a lot of cases. So let me go ahead and bring it on around here to the left. Differential braking to bring it around a little bit tighter than I normally would. And ah, okay, a little better. That'll work. I'll take this 
And okay, chalk's in, and let me just start to go around the cockpit and start shutting down systems. So let me go gyros off. Actually, no, that was fuel pumps. I didn't want to do that at all, did I? Oh, well, I'll figure all this stuff out later. Just go ahead and pull my throttle to cut off. And this time, one way or another, I am going to figure out this canopy. I'm not going to sit here and have the canopy closed. I'll get an answer to y'all here momentarily. But, um, yeah, let me just kill the rest of this stuff. Get the load off the battery. I did this way, way out of order. Okay, and um, let me see, DCG and AC gen, those aren't out operational anyway. And yeah, I'm, I'm convinced now that this AC generator, that's actually an inverter because it, it, well, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that. I mean, you get the different tone even with the main generator off. So there's nothing spinning this generator. I'm convinced now that's an inverter coming off of the, just the normal DC buses, probably off just the battery bus. Okay, gyro's off. That's what I was trying to do first last time around. And I'm going to go these two switches off. These are the ones that I know that I hit during the startup, although there are some more that are on that I didn't touch myself. And, okay, battery off. Okay, deflate. Now let me figure this out. I will be right back. Well, I am totally at a loss. I had it open at one point, just a combination of positions down here on the lock-unlock lever, and I used the manual command, uh, right control, or left control, left alt C. I don't know. I'm at a complete loss. I'll figure it out at some point. I, it's pre-release. It might just not be working. And it might, like I said, I think I said before, it might just take crew chief intervention to get this thing open in the first place. But okay, that's good enough for this mission. I'm going to move on to bombing and use of the KH-66 Beam Rider missile in the next uh, mission, a couple of videos. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.